curiosity approach, which you may have seen some uh, uh, things about that already, and hopefully you've seen the book. But we talk about the three aspects of curiosity. One is what we don't know. One is uh, about what we're interested in, about playfulness, and the other about possibility. Uh, and it's an enormously important uh, set of thinkings and set of theories going on there. But the one that I get people sort of having a, a not so much a negative response to, but a sort of like, oh, is, is that really useful, is the one about play. Now, so isn't play silly? Isn't play frivolous? Isn't play just something you do when, you know, when you've got nothing else to do? And actually, no. Play is really important. It's really important on a whole host of levels, particularly with the brain. So play, now there's the play that most people think is play now is what we call organized sport. Now that's actually not play, although there's playfulness that goes on in it and so on and so forth and it's become called play. But actually when we talk about play as in the thing that is great for the body, great for the brain, great for a whole bunch of other processes, which I'll talk about in a second, is play as unregulated not organized, so self-organizing, just spontaneous engagement with other people or with other things. So play is actually something that isn't organized, that isn't set up, and where people just come together or someone comes together with a variety of things and just allows the process to go for itself. Uh, putting it in a sort of a technical term, it's engagement with novelty purely for the pleasure of the engagement. Now what's interesting though, and when I'm talking about curiosity and I'm talking about learning and I'm talking about engaging and expanding your experiences, so what do you learn from play? Well actually, you learn an awful lot. And I think that technical term where it's just novelty um, for the sheer pleasure of it, as different from novelty where you're learning something, which is what happens in curiosity for interest and for information. So, actually play teaches you a lot. And one of the important things, one of the most important, that Alan Shaw does a lot of talking about this, is affect regulation. How do we regulate your emotional responses? And how do you know how to regulate your emotional responses? Unless you're having emotional responses and you're seeing them in some kind of context with somebody else without it being regulated. Well, guess what? That's play. So isn't that neat? Kids go out there, they muck around, somebody goes a bit too far or gets a little bit too carried away, somebody gets hurt. Now, in a situation where everybody is responsive, we're talking here, we, hopefully we've got a reasonably reasonable sort of pleasant set of human beings, no sort of psychopaths in the group, uh, then what the person will more or less say to themselves is, oh wow, I went too far there. And then they learn to regulate that affect. And the one that got hurt and upset, they go, wow, look how upset. This is what happens. This is, this is getting upset at what people do. And so they learn to be able to regulate that part of their affect. Another thing that play does is it teaches so, you social rules. So uh, what is it that is okay for this other, these other people. What can I do that is acceptable? What can I do that's unacceptable? What keeps me in the social group and what excludes me from the social group? And if someone goes in and is, is oh, nasty and heavy or violent or rough, then they're going to be excluded from the play. And if someone is too timid or too um, uh, feeling uncomfortable with their space, then they're perhaps going to find themselves not included in the play. Uh, and now, a lot of this goes down to the win or loser world uh, theory and win or loser world talk, which we've had a little bit of talk about before, but we'll continue to have those as we go along, where when winning becomes the purpose of play, that's when it becomes in serious trouble. That's when it becomes difficult. That when it's, that's when it ceases to be a game. And uh, in fact, I, I, I love it. George Carlin said one of those things. Uh, we always we stop playing when we're winning. So play is important for our affect regulation, for our social 
structures. But it's also really important for just our physical being, just getting a sense of where the body will go, what it will do. Now if I'm in an organized sport, if I'm in a, a, a sport that has particular preset determinations of what is considered successful and what is not considered successful, well then I'm going to strive for those goals, I'm going to strive for those and it's not so much what my body does and what my body can do, it's whether my body can achieve what needs to be achieved in order to successfully be in the game. But in play, one just plays and mucks around and does things and then you go a little bit over and you hurt yourself or somebody else goes a bit over and hurts themselves and you learn about physical capabilities, about physical extends how far you can go and also it learns that if you don't try hard enough then you're not able to keep the game going and not able to keep the play flowing. Uh, so there's another one. So there we have affect, our emotional regulation, our social engagement and social ruling and social uh, uh, collections of processes and how to stay engaged and connected and not become uh, disconnected and disengaged and even banished from the group. Then we also have this thing of biological, your personal physical biological capabilities. Now that's a lot of stuff that's going on in the sense of play. Now I don't know whether you can hear it through the microphone but there's some dogs out there now in the, in the backyard and they're actually playing. There's a lot of barking and growling going on and running around and what they're doing is they're kind of playing. Okay, is this a situation that's rough? Is this a situation that's safe? Is this a situation that's playful? And you might notice with dogs that when they are playing that they bow themselves down, that when they're playing they have little play rules and, and physical shows and the, and the big dog will bow themselves down in front of the, uh, of the, of the experience. The barking that they do is to say, okay, I'm making noise. Now the barking there, I don't know whether you heard it, was high pitched. Okay, so I'm not too serious, I'm a little bit unsure, uh, we're still going. Now if it gets deeper and growlier, so we have all kinds of rules of what is acceptable and what is safe and what is danger. This all happens with play. And I just want to recommend at the end an amazing, uh, and I started this speech really from something I heard from Dr. Stuart Brown who has set up the National Institute for Play, go to nifplay.org and it's a wonderful website and I think you'll find so much information about how valuable and important and useful is play for everything to do with our being.